Okay, so I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller now and continue in the same fashion. It's good to try to pull some of your, your color in, smudge it inward so that you pull in a little bit of the sky as well. kind of build these shapes out however you want them to be. There's really no right or wrong here as long as it's uh, a white swirly shape with a lot of definition it's going to be looking good. Pull up a little bit from the bottom here. Okay. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use the next blender brush which I like. It's called Diffuse Blur. and. 38 for the strength, 21 for the grain. I usually leave it at that no matter what I'm doing. And I'm going to be very light in, in my pressure here when I'm pushing down. I'm just pushing down lightly. So I don't want to blend it too much. I just want to blend it lightly. All over everything. Just kind of get it all blurred together. But don't blur it too much. It's really just diffusing it. It's not actually blurring it so much. Okay. And once that's done, we're going to go back to our coarse oily blender, the first blender brush we used. And while the setting's still a little smaller, we're going to use those same but tighter circles this time, more defined, to bring back some of our hard shapes, some of our hard edges. So we don't want it to be soft everywhere, we want it to have a little bit of both. And this is going to start to make it look more like a realistic cloud or a painterly realistic cloud. Same thing on the other side. You want the top edges to be pretty sharp, bottom edges not so much. So don't just go over the whole thing and sharpen it all again. You want it to be soft in some spots and coarse in other spots. You just kind of want to build it out. You don't want too many big solid white areas, so that's why I'm trying to trying to drag in some of this color. And what's interesting is, since this is set to the screen blending mode, I'm actually not even really moving color. Um, I'm essentially just smudging the white color from the clouds around. You can see I can move them if I want to. So it's a lot like working with real paint. You're, you're utilizing the fact that you can put a solid, one solid white color on here and you can smudge it around to get different levels of opacity rather than, you know, go through and just keep picking from different colors from your palette, different colors of blue and trying to mix them in. This is just, for me, this is just way more efficient and it's more practical. Um, it's more like traditional painting would be, or at least the techniques I've observed for painting clouds. So that's a lot how this that's a lot of how this is developed for me and how I develop a lot of my techniques is based on practicality. I don't want to I don't want to spend 4 hours painting clouds when I can do it in, you know, 10 minutes or less. It's taken taking me a little longer to do this as an example. Um, once you get the hang of this, you could do this really quickly. So I'm going to go back to my blender diffuse blur brush again and just lightly soften up a little bit of those edges, but not everywhere. Just kind of lightly go over it once. And I think that's looking pretty good. And you're going to soften it a little bit more in some of these places with too, too jagged of detail. It needs to be softened. And it's really up to you to decide how you want it to look. could spend forever on this. And let's see. So one of the last things we could do just to kind of make it more visually interesting is put a vignette on it. So we'll make a new layer and we'll do something similar in the blend modes except we'll set it to multiply which is the opposite of screen. It's only going to let dark colors go through and we're going to name it vignette. And we're going to take our airbrush, digital airbrush, and we're going to pick almost black, kind of blue. Big brush size, so opacity is very low. And oops, we have it set to jitter. We want to take the jitter all the way down to zero. I 
And now that brush is functioning as it should. And basically I'm just going to darken these edges and I'm going to go a little overboard here because I'm going to pull it back. So that may be a little too much. And so you can see now that if we have our blend mode set to multiply, it's only allowing the dark to show through that if we set our brush to white, it's going to basically work like an eraser and paint out some of that vignette. And you can see if I set the blend mode back to normal default, you can see that white and that black that I painted in. So it's a good way to work back and forth. You could do the same thing with the clouds. You could uh, go into the clouds layer since it's set to screen and you could take black or a dark blue color and you could paint in some shadows some darker areas on the clouds if you wanted to and that might even look good and you know you could even go through and sharpen up that edge and so that's very handy it's a good thing to get used to using these blend modes for um, areas where you can utilize them um, on individual layers to your advantage, especially for lightening and darkening and highlights and midtones and texture. Don't be afraid to use a lot of layers. In my more elaborate paintings, I might use 30, 60 layers, you know, even more than that. I really don't even want to count how many layers I use for my own sanity. Um, so let's go back to our vignette layer and let's knock that down. It's a little too dark. I want it to be, I don't know, maybe more like that. And let's just call that good. Uh, you get a good idea of how we did that. Um, we mainly just plopped down some white color with our clouds layer set to screen. It was helpful to use your digital airbrush, set it to jitter so that it gets you the more uh, fluffy, cottony, random shapes. And then we used our coarse oily blender to build up the cloud shapes. And and we diffused it, or blurred it a little bit, softened it, if you will, with our diffuse blur brush. And we have a nice looking cloud background that you could apply to just about any painting.